Witam wszystkich bardzo serdecznie. I'm Mystical and today I'll be bringing you the latest in AR and VR news. As usual, you have chapters down below to skip to any specific part of this video that you might be most interested in. And with that being said, let's get right into it. So very first thing, let's get this out of the way because you guys have been telling me quite a bit about this. A VR file manager has come out on Quest and this is really, really exciting. It's actually from the developer of Quest Game Optimizer. Now we have a super simple way of accessing the Android file manager, which is a default thing baked into every single Android device on Quest. Instead of, you know, having to install an activity launcher or something like that, we now have an app on the Quest store allowing us to do this. This is massive for a number of reasons, but the biggest one of course being it allowing us to install third party APKs and applications without having to have developer mode enabled or needing a computer. It's huge. I have absolutely no idea how the developer of Quest Game Optimizer actually managed to get this on the Horizon store because uh, I'm sure that this isn't something Meta would want. If it is something they would want, why wouldn't they just do it themselves? After all, from what I understand, all this does is it launches the activity of the file manager that is baked into Android. Why no default meta? So this is all why having such an app on the store is such a big deal. However, reading from Upload VR, it's unclear whether Meta approved it knowing it had this capability. Last month, Meta forced developers of Mobile VR Station, another app on the store, to remove this capability, noting that it facilitates the installation of other apps, which, as you can see here, Meta clearly doesn't want. So how long this is going to be up, I'm not entirely certain. Thus, it seems possible Meta will ask the VR file manager developer to do the same. But for now, it's available for free. And and let me just make sure it's still available. Yep, it is still available for free on the Meta Horizon store. Massive deal. Uh, very surprised they let that on there. Meta's EMG wristband. This is a project I'm super excited about. Some of you might know I have the Mayo armband, which is essentially the very first prototype that Meta had of this armband. And Meta actually purchased that company and are now using their technology. Of course, upgraded quite a bit, but you get the point. Well, now we have gotten a little bit of a glimpse of what the new gestures will look like on the Meta armband. In a peer-reviewed paper titled A Generic, Non-Invasive Neuromotor Interface for Human-Computer Interaction, describes in scientific detail the device which Meta has been developing since 2019, when it acquired the startup called Control Labs. Control Labs was co-founded and led by computational neuroscientist Thomas Reardon, who still leads the project at Meta to today. So that's quite an interesting one, actually. He's been leading the project ever since, which is pretty cool. The video released alongside the paper shows four types of gestures, writing individual characters on a surface using your index finger, which are converted to digital characters for text entry. Knowing how accurate the Mayo armband was, I'm quite skeptical. Rotating your hand, using your wrist to control a one-dimensional cursor, swiping your thumb against the side of your index finger, tapping your thumb against your index finger, or holding as a tap click. Fairly standard gestures, these are the only four that we have for now. I really hope that they either let us map our own gestures or they add more to this list, as uh, I think for a device like this to become successful, we really need to have a number of gestures that we can choose from in order to make it feel a lot more natural. I still believe out of all of these, this is the most natural gesture we have had with hand tracking to date. Meta Ray-Ban sales have more than tripled this year so far. So we already knew that the Meta Ray-Bans were very successful, especially in the EEA region. Apparently, now they have tripled. I'm not surprised I got a pair myself. I'm in love. I use them at events. I use them at places where I want to be hands-free. They also make for great POV driving videos. The statistic was given by SLR Exotica during its Q2 2025 earnings call today, with CEO Francesco Milleri telling investors that the smart glasses are performing exceptionally well. So yeah, Meta is also signed with SLR Exotica, extending their partnership into the next decade to develop multi-generational smart glasses in the future. And earlier this month, Meta invested 3 billion euro in Eslor Luxotica taking a 3% stake in the company, and it's reportedly considering further investment to move this up to 5% over time. So you can see here, Meta is doing really well with Eslor Luxotica. Again, not super surprised, we've been hearing the stats, we've been hearing the news about how well they've been doing throughout the last year. A very interesting, brand new piece of information that actually came out from Meta themselves, and one that I wouldn't have expected is um, Meta explaining why ideal VR sessions are actually 
actually 20 to 40 minutes long. This is completely weird to me because personally, personally, and I would love to hear your opinions in the comment section. When I jump into virtual reality, I definitely do not jump in for 20 to 40 minutes. When I'm jumping into VR, I'm jumping in for like an hour at least because, you know, the whole thing of putting on the headset, launching a game, especially if I'm connecting to a PC VR, a uh, capable PC, well, that just makes things a whole lot more cumbersome. And I don't really want to be in there for 20 to 40 minutes if I have to do all that. Some games are really nice and simple, like Cubism, where I don't even need controllers to play the thing. That I might actually jump into for about 20 minutes, just to relax, you know, listen to the music and stuff like that. In a blog post for developers, the company explains that sessions must be long enough to deliver on a satisfying amount of progress, but not so long as to run into current form factor limitations on how long people can continuously stay in their headsets. In general, we recommend building VR games that are optimized for the 20 to 40 minutes Goldilocks zone, so users don't need to choose between quitting in the middle of something or pushing themselves past their comfort levels. This is something Meta is really big on, not pushing people past their comfort levels, because of course, if you push people past that comfort level, well then they won't want to return into virtual reality in the future, because they might feel uncomfortable, they might feel motion sickness, etc, etc. But I have seen developers now complaining on Twitter, or X, whatever you want to call it, that uh, this is information that they should have received ages ago, that they're actually quite upset about the fact that Meta didn't release this info earlier, because this would have been great to know. And yeah, it absolutely would have. Sessions shorter than 20 minutes, Meta explains, don't justify the friction of putting on a headset. Specifically, they don't deliver enough progress engagement or entertainment to validate the decision to engage with VR. You see, that's my thing. But instead of 20 minutes, it's like an hour. That's why I hung them up on the wall. Really easy access now. Sessions that drag on for more than 40 minutes, on the other hand, force users to choose between quitting in the middle of something oh, voice crack. or pushing themselves past their comfort levels. Most quest sessions are shorter than 40 minutes, Meta says, with longer sessions being special occasions. So yeah, would absolutely love to hear your opinions on this because I don't necessarily agree with this 100%. Of course, they have the stats, so this is definitely more than accurate, but it's just not something I would agree with. Something I do agree with, however, though, super small holographic displays. And Meta and Stanford's thin holographic display is now bringing VR glasses closer to reality. Meta and Stanford's Synthetic Aperture Waveguide Holography. Research aims to deliver VR glasses with a total optical stack thickness of less than three millimeters. So this is absolutely crazy. The paper comes from two researchers from Meta's Display Systems Research Team. An associate professor at Stanford and a Stanford PhD student supported by a Meta Research Fellowship. For context, the thickness of current VR slash MR headsets is almost entirely driven by the optics and displays, while pancake lenses have in recent years enabled thinner headsets like the Quest 3, by shortening the optical path between the lens and display, the pancake lens stack itself is still relatively thick and heavy, far more so than glasses. Douglas Landman, the director of Meta's display systems research team, has often spoken of his desire one day help ship VR glasses, a head-mounted display system that can deliver VR in a four-factor no more cumbersome than regular glasses. This will, of course, require a fundamentally different kind of display system than anything shipping today and that's the kind of research Meta moves closer to. The word holographic has many different meanings in today's industry, and it is often misused and abused. To be clear, the prototype presented in the new paper is a true holographic display, providing a realistic, truly 3D image with inherent depth cues, and thus mitigating a major flaw of today's headset called Virgin's Accommodation Conflict. So we've actually spoken about this previous episode as well. The discomfort your eyes feel because they're pointing towards a virtual distance of objects, but focusing on a fixed focal distance of the lenses. The prototype uses tiny fiber coupled lasers for each color, red, green, and blue, which are steered by tiny, very fast mirrors into an optical waveguide, which expands and guides the light into a spatial light modulator, which modulates it back into a holographic eyepiece lens in front of your eye. Three millimeters is obviously absolutely tiny compared to what we have today. And in case you are interested to learn a little bit more about this, I will leave a link to the entire Upload VR article down below. I highly encourage you to check it out. But yeah, super excited. Would love to see, imagine that. Imagine seeing more absolutely tiny headsets that we can wear for longer because obviously they're lighter. Really, really cool. Super happy to see this technology moving forward. Can't wait to uh, see when that becomes commercial. Talking about something that is coming a lot sooner, meta avatars get deeper body and face customization, AI 
outfit assist. So uh, more AI here, of course, but now you get even more customization for your meta avatar, something that people, of course, keep complaining about. So first we've got deeper body and face customization. Meta avatars have been criticized by some for only supporting a narrow range of possible body and face shapes. The new system aims to solve this. Let QuickShare access your precise location. Yeah, sure, why not? Who's trying to share to me? The system now has 16 pre-made body types as a starting point, and it now has slightly to customize your avatar's hips, waist, shoulders, arms, and stomach to more closely match your real or ideal body. So yeah, this looks a lot better than what they had to begin with. Quite a bit of customization here, actually. I'm surprised it took this long, to be honest. Now, I'm obviously not a developer or designer, but I can't imagine that this would be that difficult when they've added all the other things, which to me seem a lot more difficult. Customization or giving more customization to the user seems like basic necessity when it comes to avatar creation today. There are also 16 pre-made face shapes for your avatar, and you can customize your face width, cheek fullness, jaw size, chin size, face depth, and maturity. So yeah, pretty cool. Meta giving us more customization there, but as well as that, they're also giving us AI clothing assist. In the US and Canada, Meta is gradually rolling out the ability to type a description of the outfit that you want and find virtual clothes that match it. Okay, so instead of essentially having the user do it, you can now have AI do it for you. I don't know if I'm like a massive fan of that. I think it's pretty cool for those that maybe can't make up their mind or have like an idea in their head, but can't exactly make it work here. Maybe AI can make it work for them, but I feel like AI is just kind of taking over things that don't necessarily need to be taken over. I don't know, maybe I'm overthinking it. It's not like Meta's taking away the ability to create your own outfit. This is just like an additional thing. Espresso has arrived to Beat Saber from Sabrina Carpenter. So again, another track in Beat Saber in case that's something you guys enjoy. It's now Beat Saber's latest shock drop and the first Sabrina Carpenter song officially available in the game. It reuses Britney Spears' environment rather than getting its own. Espresso is now available for $1.99 in Beat Saber on Quest and PC VR. So there you go, Beat Saber fans, more music for you officially from Beat Saber. Sharp is making a hybrid VR glove controller. I believe they're most known for TVs, so it's pretty interesting that they're jumping into the VR glove and controller market. But to be clear, this isn't a force feedback glove. It doesn't resist the movement of your fingers. What it does have is multi-segmented tactile elements on each fingertip, including the thumb, which can produce vibration patterns that stimulate the texture of virtual objects. The basic idea here isn't new, and companies like B-Haptics even sell VR haptic gloves for $250 and have done for years now. But based on the images and description, Sharp's glove would have a much higher tactile resolution, allowing for a far more realistic recreation of textures. Further, rather than being just a glove, Sharp's device includes the surface of a typical VR controller, including the buttons and thumbstick attached to the side of your index finger for your thumb to rest on and use. It's essentially a hybrid VR glove and controller, something that many VR enthusiasts have been asking for for years. Yeah, as a matter of fact, we actually built one using DIY in the past. Sharp's webpage for the project lists a provisional price of 100,000 yen. I believe, I think that's yen, roughly $700, though notes that it has not yet been decided whether this will be commercialized. So that's pretty interesting. I wonder how they're going to check whether they want to commercialize this. $700 is awfully expensive though. I don't think they're going to be marketing this towards consumers, rather prosumers or companies that, uh, where, you know, you might need to feel texture in virtual reality in order to do some kind of training or something like that. Either way though, that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you all so, so much for watching. I hope you guys learned something new. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please do leave a like. If disliked, I guess this button works too, but let me know why down below. If you're not yet part of our community, check out our Discord and our Reddit down below where I wanna see you posting your spice memes. And thank you so, so much to all the Patreons supporting this channel. You guys are amazing. Seriously, much love. You are what makes these videos possible. And thank you to anyone else supporting the channel, even if you're just watching. That also counts as support. So, with that being said, as usual, if you want to be notified of content coming up on the channel, make sure to smack the subscribe button with your dimmer bell and see you in the next video. Peace. Yeah. Elegancki grill. Mm -hmm.